All right, a closing argument. I want you to keep two things really clear in your mind, okay? A perjury trap is what the counsel to the president, Rudy Giuliani, and the president himself keep saying, that's what they're worried about. That's what's waiting for the president if he testifies. We have no reason to know that. A perjury trap is a form of arguable prosecutorial misconduct. This is a form of entrapment. You're not supposed to do this. They're not supposed to bring you into an interview just to try to get you to lie. And the precedent is, well, did they bring you in for fact-finding purposes or was it just to get you? That's the argument they're making about Flynn now, that he was trapped. They trapped the president, too. We have no reason to believe they want to do that. There are plenty of questions this president could ask, and you could argue that only he can answer. Perjury is what they're really worried about. A material misrepresentation of fact for the purposes of deception. It's a crime. So the idea, well, if they believe Comey instead of Trump, then that's it. That's not it. It's a crime. They would have to prove it beyond a reasonable doubt, okay? Now, I argue that Rudy uses this phrase because it's part of their narrative, that the president is being victimized. But what they're really worried about is perjury, that the president is going to do something to himself. He's going to freelance. He's going to go off script. He's going to embellish in a reckless way that will be abusive of the truth. And in that context, it could be a crime. The scenario they want you to accept is this one about Comey and Trump. Different stories. Prosecutor likes Comey, doesn't like Trump. Remember the narrative that Trump is the victim, right? And then they're going to get him for perjury. Again, it's not how it works. But that's why the president blurted out today that even if I'm telling the truth, that makes me a liar. No, that's not the truth, okay? And when Rudy said, the truth is not the truth, that's another riff on the same rubbish. That's not the way it works, and Rudy knows it. Perjury is a crime, not a preference. You have to prove it beyond a reasonable doubt. Now, did you see the memo that Judge Kavanaugh, now Judge Kavanaugh, wrote when he was working for Ken Starr for a different president? The questions that he wrote. The salacious and disgusting questions, that's what's going to be the headline. A lot of people are going to avoid them. Not me, but not for the reason that you think. What came before it, this page, this is so meaningful. Why? Because Kavanaugh was working for Starr, and he was under attack by then-President Clinton. And they came to really resent what was being done, and it created a hardness and a harshness on the team. That's what Rudy has reason to worry about, that a memo like this is sitting on Mueller's desk right now. Look at some of the things that Kavanaugh, remember, this is the man that the president wants to be our next Supreme Court justice, okay? This is what was coming out of him. We're not going to give him any break unless he resigns or confesses to perjury when he comes in. In the end, I'm convinced that there really is no reason to give him any slack. The idea of going easy on him is abhorrent to me. Listen to the reasoning. What he has especially convinced me of, the appropriateness of obtaining his full and complete testimony. Why? He goes on to talk about how, because he's lied, he's lied to the American people, he's lied to his aides, and... He has disgraced this office, the independent counsel, the special counsel with the case of Mueller, a sustained propaganda campaign that would make Nixon blush. This is what they're worried about. Now you get to the juicy bits. The seven out of 10 questions that he came up with for President Clinton are of the most vulgar. I'm actually going to block him a little bit just in case my kids are watching. Vulgar nature that he could muster. There's all kinds of raunchy stuff in these questions. What Clinton did to Monica, what he did to himself. But here's the point. Before you get upset at me for putting these questions up here and say that's offensive, many of you who will find this sexual language offensive are the same people who think Kavanaugh should be our next Supreme Court pick. He wrote all of these. This was what his, his, was in his head, what he thought was right to ask a president of the United States. And why I'm using them is I want you to look at the form of the question, because again, it's a window into what Trump's team is worried about. If Monica Lewinsky says, oh, that was terrible. If Monica Lewinsky says this, would she be lying? That's a specific way to ask a question, and here's why. It's laying it out to a guy that you already know what happened, so don't try to control the narrative. And if you deny what we know happened, you may be lying. And if you don't agree with it, you may be materially misrepresenting. That's tough to handle, especially for someone like Trump. And that's what his folks are worried about. Not what will be done to Trump, but what will he will do to himself when he's confronted by smarter people who are motivated to show that he has lied and falsely disparaged the special counsel.